In the start of the 20th century, many mediums rose to prominence and more and more popular stories began to take hold as they're lasting to this day. But in the world of comics where many legends made their mark with solo works or collaborative efforts, one name means big business. The Who. Stay tuned to find out. I mentioned TMNT 03 in the first episode, and we're returning to that world in an episode that tributes the one and only proclaimed king of comics, Jack Kirby. I can go long and hard about his history, but there are plenty of other videos that do that, and we're only focusing on TMNT 03's episode titled The King for Kirby's 107th Birthday, which is in its first animated and only adaptation. Since the episode was based on a Donatello solo story known as Kirby and the Warp Crystal, which would also be adapted for children but in the TMNT 87 style, let us begin. We begin in an action prologue affixed with Jack Kirby's signature styling, such as his Kirby Crackles, as we get into this rather isekai story of Donnie, lone in battle against scores of foes. And then it's shifted to the beginning as there's a storyline within this tale which involves the Terrapin Teenage Team to remain hidden at April's place. But other than the cabin fever that is taking on a whole new meaning of Crowded with the Turtles getting at it about their predicament. To act rash now or plan ahead, much to April and Splinter's chagrin. But in the typical teenage acts overall in the space, what is there to come? Hmm. Other than taking advantage of their friend's kindness, the turtles mean well, but the plot kicks off with Don exploring an issue to fix in April's basement, and then a bat thing out of hell emerges that puzzles our lone singular hero with Splinterson, yeah that's their official surname for the team, scoping out curiousness and encountering a lone older man doodling in the room with little care as the doodler's pencil, an ominous pink crystal animating to life sentient figures of various creatures that grasp Don's attention as the two go face to face in this encounter. What? A green monster? I don't remember drawing you. As one of few friendly human characters, he was willing to surrender, but Don's overall friendliness assured no worry as his fascination. From the back and forth with a good introduction and some testing out drawing capabilities, Don and his new pal are widened to behold a portal door that Kirby designed that strangely still remains. And then the duo venture through in astonishment as they embark on a strange new adventure in a strange new world mostly based on Kirby's definite style. What new unexpected adventure will our heroes encounter in this? Fearsome army? Fearless warriors? The sky's the limit. Deeper in the second act, Donnie reinstitutes the what if in this new land as another alternative universe which isn't all that new with them. But what fate awaits as it's all a creation of Kirby's works that have created his own universe of his own artistic creations and speaks to one of us as we are crafting our own stories and setting up things in our own creativity of much different worlds to explore and different stories to tell. As few recognizable faces are sentient and strung about as they resemble creatures in Kirby's book and though not a one by one recreation of the real Kirby's look, the inspiration is there. As in his animation, Kirby's works are definite inspiration and design as you can see some hints of it in works like Batman and Superman TAS, as them from Bruce Timm's style. As well as many other examples of how Jack's style is replicated. The story as new life begins to take place in a seemingly endless skirmish of monsters and men. An interpretation by Don will tip the scales and even the odds of men as they fought off and repelled the demonic entities with a new alliance's forge as the Beast of Darkness will return. And not soon after that, a swarm of dark beast monsters encroaches on the field, bloodthirsty for battle as the cadre of calibers are in the last line of defense to a bridge. Getting a Rainbow Bridge door feel from here. As the line was held off as it was unintentional by Kirby that led to the creation of the creatures. With Kirby reminiscing in the fight, a quick glance of his works with him and equipping Don with a new weapon in the fight. Equipment that set asunder the tides and immobilized the foes. 
and a new creation is underway stemming from earlier seen from Don's assumption of brain matter and their responses to it coming to full play in the present as our heroes are on the brink of the feet until Kirby decides to revise his earlier works of the monsters and applied restraints that pause the creature's rampage as his day is one. And Kirby and Don recanted their grand adventure with a trip back to the portal as it was fluctuating vividly as time was running out as Kirby demanded Don return first. As Don vaulted through the transporter portal was shrinking on our side as Don made it through much to his disappointment that Kirby will remain lost in a universe of his own design. But what's this? A paper airplane of Kirby's illustration of Don with meaningful sentiments written to assure Don as he remains lonely in Kirby's studio. Don, life at best is bittersweet. See you around, pal. Kirby. On the closing part, it took some time as Donnie returned upstairs, not really having it with Raph as he then wanders to the night sky as the unknown fate of the artist dwells within Don's mind. As a love letter to Kirby, most of these much desire. As the only animated adaptation of the story, it's pretty alright as long as you don't take it seriously. But some lingering plot holes such as, will April notice the disappearance of her new tenant? Is there more of the same crystal Kirby has? And who would use something like this by those with nefarious ambitions if given a chance? Kinda wish we had a conclusion of sorts since a previous episode concluded a lingering storyline also involving magic crystals. As for Kirby himself, a remarkable stand-in for the real Jack Kirby, whose works I began to recognize and admire throughout the years, and how it influenced present work in the comic book movie landscape. Although not much are winners. Additional, Kirby is voiced by Mike Pollock, who definitely brings a gruff and friendly exterior to the portrayal of him. As for the legacy, it was definitely a big missed opportunity when it was Kirby's 100th birthday back in 2017. When they were airing the final season of the 2012 series in which in the previous season also involved a mysterious crystal that had the ability to animate two dimensional creatures into living breathing 3D characters. Oddly enough in a CG animated series, but still enjoyable nonetheless. The King, incredible highs, present low. But what a ride it was as we get to explore more of Donnie, mostly out of his element and adapting all the way. And it's now 40 years of existence, TMNT as a seemingly parody in New Light explored and tributed many things. I wonder what else is also on the horizon as I can't wait to find out. Anyway, you know the deal, like, sub, and share, and I'll see you soon for Episodes Episode 3.